that sequence was shot over the course of three hours in Dublin Zoo. And what's interesting about that clip is that I shot it on a combination of this, a Canon FD 200mm 2.8 lens, and a 135 2.8 lens, which I bought on eBay for the grand total of 160 quid for the two lenses, shipped from Japan. And that's actually not a bad deal considering how much it costs to get good prime lenses. If you want a Sigma art lens, you're talking 10 times the price at least. The only issue is these are lenses from 1989, so they're nowhere near as good as modern lenses. But they were surprisingly good. You know, this thing is fairly sharp, wide open, and the center. If you stop it down, it gets really good. I shot all those video clips at f4 to f8, and this thing was a really good little lens to use. And for 80 quid, you can't really go wrong with it. The adapter I'm using is this nice KNF Concept Generation 2. And I have to say, it's the fiddliest thing I've ever used because the lens doesn't adapt brilliantly. I have an OM adapter, which is used for my OM lenses, and it's a fine adapter. You just put it on, twist, and it's done. But the Canon FD lens doesn't adapt that easily because of the way the aperture control works. So what you have to do is, you have to take your FD lens. This is the 50 millimeter 1.4. This is the breech lock version. So you have to put the adapter in like open mode and put it on the lens, twist the breech lock, and then you have to turn the adapter ring around to lock so that the adapter actually works inside the lens. If you leave it on open, like that, the aperture ring just, it, it, it does nothing, it's useless. So adapting these lenses can be a bit fiddly. And there's a couple of times when I was using these that I was like, oh, I'll shoot it, you know, F4, and it's actually at F1.4 because I didn't have the ring in the right position. It'd be nice if the ring could like clunk into a position and just lock there really tightly, or I could like put a pin in it or something, or like a lock button to keep it so that the aperture actually works. Small complaint, but frustrating. The other thing about these lenses is they are all manual. So you do need to use the aperture ring on the lens to mount to uh, control your aperture. I shoot aperture priority mode when I'm doing photos anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And then you have to also manually focus the lens. And I like manually focusing these lenses. The focus is very smooth. It's absolutely butter smooth. It has a nice long throw on most of these lenses. It's around 270, 230 degrees. So it's a nice smooth focus and it's really easy to pull focus on a film camera. Uh, my Olympus camera on the shelf there, dirt easy to focus with because it has a focusing screen aid. You just turn and it's in focus, you're done. It's really good. On a digital camera, when you adapt them, the focusing can be a bit difficult. And that is because the screen isn't good enough to tell if the focus is perfect. Now, if I'm shooting video with my Ninja Inferno, I can tell the focus is absolutely spot on every time because the screen is so clear. But on the Sony screen in the viewfinder, it's not quite good enough to pull focus. And if you turn on the focus peaking, it gets a bit hairy because the focus peaking tells you that there's this huge section in focus. When actually, in fact, the actual depth of field is like this. And if you're shooting at f1.4, you've got a tiny depth of field and it gets quite hard to nail it on something and ternary things tend to actually end up out of focus more than not. So you end up having to use the punch into focus and that works really, really well. I love that because you can just nail it every single time and it looks great. And when you nail it, like there's one picture with this I took of an African hornbill and it was tack sharp. So overall, they're actually pretty good. The major issue I have with this one in particular is the flare resistance is not good. You point this anywhere at a light source and it's going to flare like nothing else. And I tried shielding it when I was taking the picture. I was like doing this, trying to shield it, you know, and I just couldn't get rid of the flare. I took the picture anyway, put it into Lightroom. It actually turned out okay. The flare adds a bit of character to the image, but if you're looking to, for good flare resistance, these vintage lenses are not how you're gonna do it. The uh, super spectra coating, as Canon calls it, isn't very good in comparison to modern coatings, which are just comically good. You know, it, like these lenses, like honestly, they can't hold a candle to my 24 to 105 or my 90 mil macro. Like they're in a different league. But the 90 mil macro is a thousand euros. This was 80, and it's really good. So if you're looking to get some nice cheap lenses, some nice fun lenses to use on your mirrorless camera, 
take a look at some of the vintage lenses out there. Some of them are brilliant. You can look at some of the old Nikon AI lenses, Canon FD, Olympus OM, some of the old Fuji lenses, and they're all out there. They're just in shops, there's millions of these things flying around. Pick a few up cheap online and have some fun with them because I'm going to be using these more and more because they're really fun to use. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time.